Christmas blessings on a beautiful, holy, sacred night like tonight. The Christmas story of God breaking into the world became true. It was and is still an incredible story. Our almighty sovereign God loving us, taking on human flesh is the story that rings of God's glory and honor and praise. It rings of the hope and the peace and the joy and the love that is given to us and the globe and all of creation. We have seen it evident in the yesterdays gone by when the audacity of hope for a better world was received in glimpses and moments as we live this life. We've experienced it in the boldness of peace as it became evidence as those started standing up for justice and justice won the day and souls and relationships were healed by the blessed peacemakers. We experienced the joy of the Lord that allowed it to overflow profoundly in all the people and the places because some of us got so happy in the Lord that we became contagious to others. And how can we ever forget how God so loved us and was so determined to make sure that we knew what love was like, that when we felt the love, a real good, healthy love, we knew that God loved us and we were determined to feel that in the depths of our soul. With all that said, I bet you if we were honest with all of ourselves, we might still raise the question, how do I continue to claim and bask and enjoy these Christmas blessings, not only for right now, but for always? How do I personally, personally, and maybe you personally, choose to claim these Christmas blessings with your whole heart, your whole life as well, to make sure that it not only exists with you, but you want it so bad in your soul that every community in every aspect of our world reigns with these blessings from our awesome God. Well, beloved, as you can guess, it's easy and not so easy. I promise you, it's easy when we have the faith and we make sure that we stay connected to the one who blesses us time and time again. But we also have to be mindful that if we don't make sure it stretches from heart to heart and breast to breast, that it will not be as blessed the world as we hoped it would be. And so this night, I just offer this simple prayer and blessing for us that we would take knowledge of this and be purposeful and intentional in what we do, what we say, how we live, so that we can make sure that these Christmas blessings last for more than just today. I heard it once say that Christmas is more than just Christmas. Someone said it's Christ's mass. In Spanish, mass means what? Does anyone know? Hey, and they said Christ is more or more of Christ or Christ more and more and more and more. And so they no longer say Merry Christmas. They say, blessed Christ mass and may you have more of Christ in your life. And the truth of the matter is that each day, the more we have Christ in our life, we will experience the blessings of Christmas. Christmas will never end because there is more of Christ in the world. More of Christ, not only in the world, but more of Christ in us. That's why this night I invite you to just hear this simple blessing. I won't be long, but I pray that you will hear it, that you will know it not only with your mind, but with your soul. I pray that you receive it and believe it and have faith to make sure that no matter what in this year ahead, you're going to make sure you live Christ's mass every day. And so I start with the first blessing. May each and every one of us have the audacity to hope, to hope for a world better than today, to hope and believe that what God says will be, will be. And that we will have this such a hope of audacity that we will make sure that we don't give up, we won't lose hope, we will keep going until we see what God says shall be. And I want you to understand that this kind of hope, it defies logic. Just like a baby came into the world and became a king. 
it doesn't make natural sense. You have to have a faith like a mustard seed. You got to have maybe even a childlike faith to get this thing. That the audacity of hope that God wants you to do, you can't expect simple logic to make it possible. Because if you keep looking at what you see every day, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. So I pray that you have such an audacity of hope that you will make sure you defy what you see so that you can see what God sees. And I pray with the same audacity of hope that you will have a yes in your spirit. That you will say yes, just like Mary said yes. She said, let it be. In order to have the audacity of hope, you have to be able to say yes to what God says, even when it doesn't look like it. But if God told you this is how it's supposed to be, and if God calls you to it, you're going to say? Only some of y'all got it, but that's all right. I'm clear. I'm clear who's going to live with this audacity of hope. The other thing that you need to know about the audacity of hope is that this blessing of hope allows you to persist in the darkness. Notice that our Jesus was born as the song they just sang, Oh, holy night, the stars were brightly shining. Jesus wasn't born in the daylight. He was born at night. Jesus wasn't born in a very fancy place. He was born in a humble place. And if you would take time to take note of what was going on in the world, it was a mighty dark time. And yet, the hope of God came into the world and persisted through the darkness to shine a light that we sing, shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the glory. And if you can hope in your darkest of places, in the darkest of time, you will be mindful that God will stir a hope in you that you believe that this too shall pass and that better day is coming. So I pray the blessings of the audacity of hope that will allow you to keep your hope no matter what. This night, I also invite you to have the boldness of peace that this Christmas blessing of peace that it would so infuse your being that the core of who you are, no matter what comes or what may, you will be at peace. This peace, I pray you understand the boldness of peace and for it to fully work out in you, you got to make sure you're working it out with God. You got to make sure that you're staying connected to the one who loves you, who cares for you, who pours for you into you, who sees you and offers you a peace that surpasses all understanding to guard your heart and mind. Because you see, this particular blessing is truly cross-like. It makes you sure that you're connected with God. Because, honey, you can't have peace with one another if you're not at peace with God and yourself. And so make sure as you go forward looking for the boldness of peace that you stay connected in. Anytime you feel out of order or out of peace, guess where you got to go first? Connect, 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 connect. Make sure you don't lose that connection. And then know once you got that peace, you got to open your eyes and open your heart and open your soul and look at the world around you because this world is not at peace everywhere yet. And when we call, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with who? Hey, we got to be the ones who boldly go forward in peace. I say boldly because giving peace in places where there's violence, giving peace where there's brokenness, giving peace where people are hungry and starving, giving peace where people are crazy, is not easy. And it might make you want to back up and leave it, but I tell you, I invite you to go boldly with the Spirit of God in peace. Recognizing because you're so grounded in peace, when you step in, peace shows up. So I pray that this Christmas blessing of peace doesn't leave you, that you will become the bold peacemaker in the world and bless the world and the spaces with the needed peace because there are minds and bodies and souls that are so un at rest and they need just a little bit of peace. 
Beloved, I pray this night that you would have an overflowing joy, that you will be blessed with the joy, unspeakable joy. One of my new favorite group is Maverick City, and they sing a rendition of Joy to the World that will blow your mind. In it, the song, the singers proclaim, the joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. More than a feeling burning in my soul, I got this joy that I won't let go. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord, my chef. It is shut up like fire in my bones. It's not just a feeling, it's a living hope. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I pray, beloved, that you will have the joy of the Lord of their strength in you, that it will be like a shower shut up in your bones and that you won't let it go, that you will make sure that when you have joy, it won't be based on circumstance, it won't be based on people, it will be based on the Lord who came to this world, who gave his life, who rose and is coming back again. And until he comes, you need to have joy and strength in this life. And I pray that this joy will stir up a song. Maybe you don't want to sing like Mary, Elizabeth, Zachariah, or even the angels, but make sure you make your own joyful noise to the Lord so that the Lord knows that you want to have the joy that only he can give. And I'm mindful that this joy, it's so awesome and it overflows. And you know how it overflows? Have you ever been around somebody that was just so full of laughter and joy that it just was so contagious. Overflowing joy is contagious. If you're not contagious, not with COVID or the flu, I'm talking about contagious with the joy of the Lord, that when people are with you, they're excited because they understand how good God is even when life is not good. So I pray, beloved, that the blessings of overflowing joy would be yours this day and every day because the joy is based in the goodness of God. It's based in his salvation of your soul. It's based on the fact that without him, you can't be. And because he is God, Emmanuel, God with us, and he never leaves nor forsake, you can always have joy. And lastly, I pray pray from the depths of my soul that you would have the determination to love no matter what. Just like Jesus came to this world. And as the scripture said, and Brother Vinny did it so beautifully, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believed him should not perish but have everlasting life. I want you to know how deeply God was determined to love you. When it said for God, that means God the Almighty One made it up in his own mind that he was going to do something for you. So love the world that he decided that his mightiest best motive was to make sure you knew that you were loved by him. And he gave his only begotten son. He didn't give a cheap gift. He gave his best gift. It was the greatest gift that we could all ever have, and you can't pay for it, and you can't earn it. It's just yours to claim. That whosoever, that is the widest welcome ever, meaning anybody, absolutely anybody, anybody you want to X out, beloved, you can't, because whosoever claims and wants to love this Jesus, his love was for them. And they got to believe. If you want help, all you got to do is believe the greatest escape. All you got to do is believe that God is, loves you. All you got to believe is that Jesus died for you. All you got to believe is the Spirit moves in you. All you got to do is believe and watch God work it out, even in your imperfections. Believe Him. And the reason why He did all of this was for the divine deliverance so that nobody should perish. Anyone that perishes in this life should not 
Because either we are determined to make sure they don't perish, but Jesus puts it in us to make sure that no one should perish. So anywhere there's brokenness, anywhere there's hurt, anywhere that's dying, God loved us so much that nobody should perish. And as long as people are perishing, and as long as people are hurting, love got to show up. But it's not only for the here and now. It's for the priceless possession that is ours forever when we leave this earth so that we may have everlasting life. Not just life on here, but life in the great by and by. That's the kind of love that was so determined to love us. How can we not love our brother and our sister who we see right now? How can we not bless them with love? Now, I know Loving some people is hard. I get it. I get it. But do you think loving you is any easier? And yet, unconditionally, God loves you. Unconditionally, God loves you. And if we could all at least by the power and grace and mercy of the Holy Ghost, ask God to give us the determination to love like God loves. I know this world would experience the Christmas blessings every day. I invite you, beloved, to not only receive these Christmas blessings that God has poured on us every day, we open our eyes and breathe and experience the new mercies that God gives us every day. But I pray more and so that you would take these blessings and recognize that your blessings are never just for you. It's for the world. And until he comes back again, because he's coming, until he comes back again, we're supposed to bless the world. Let Christ be more and more in your soul. Let Christ be so evident in you that you don't even have to say a word some days that you would walk in this world and people will know that something is different about you and they'll be drawn to you so that you can then say, hey, it's not me, but it's him. He's the one that blessed us. He's the one that's favored us. He's the one that came so that we could all have life. And with all of this, he promises until he comes back, there will be new opportunities, new experiences, new favor, new grace, new mercy. And as long as there is newness in God, there's blessings in God. May Christ's mass be yours. May you be blessed upon blessed. Look in your life. Ask God to open you so that your heart, your mind, and soul receives this and say, I am going to be audacious with my hope. I'm going to be bold vessels of peace. I'm going to let my joy overflow. I'm going to be determined to love no matter what. And I promise you, if you do so, you'll be amazed at the miracles, small and great, that will happen. Because just like God blessed you with this miracle, you're called to make sure more happen in the earth. May the Christmas blessings be yours now and forevermore. Amen.